Hey, I just want to make sure that you pause to read the disclaimer that I'm putting up right now. And you can look in the description for links to any of the things or articles that I will be discussing in this video. Hey everyone, so the long story short of it is that I got really sick and I was having some breathing issues and it just kept getting worse and worse until I eventually had to go to the hospital. So I am clearly back from the hospital and I have pretty much fully recovered but I'm still having some breathing issues. It's pretty much the weather that's the main cause of it. I don't have, you know, the virus. But the whole process set me back on some things that I was working on, including this video. And after working out everything else that I needed to do, I am now back to put this video up. But I just wanted to explain that, again, this series, the 5K series, is about me going back and revisiting some heavily criticized topics that all center around me reaching 5K subs. And for this video, I'm going back to the Matthew Patrick videos that I made. I made two of them because those videos are starting to get some attention now. And I'd rather just address the concerns now than wait for it to blow up the way that the Markiplier one did and then have to do something about that. So I'm just gonna get out the way now. And I decided to do it in the form of responding to one comment in particular because it pretty much addressed all the concerns that people have about the Matthew Patrick videos that I made. So I'm just gonna do that and yeah, let's get started with part two of this Let's Talk. So with all that being said, I'm going to look at one of the most well-spoken critiques I've ever gotten. And it's, it's very well written. It's one of the best critiques I've had to the point where people were saying, you need to go to this video and read this critique. You need to read it. You need to see what this person's saying. They dismantled her. And I was like, oh. Let's see. Let's see what's going on. Let's see, have I done something wrong? And as I was reading it at first, I was like, hmm, maybe this person has a point. But as you keep going, the, the BS really starts to ramp up and you can just tell that this person is just full of it and it's ridiculous. They're just projecting constantly. So I'm going to pull it up and I'm going to go through it because I think that it's important to actually address this. And for the record, I'm going to be keeping this private and I'm not going to be showing the name because I don't want people to, you know, pile up on this person. I don't want anyone to associate themselves or affiliate themselves with this person, but I also don't want people to harass this person because of the BS that they were trying to spread. But yeah, I'm just going to go through everything that they said and show you that this is one of the best critiques I've got. So this gives you an example of the crap that people say all the time. And just imagine how poorly worded these critiques normally are. Not to mention this person did bring up new things that other people haven't said, but it's still the same stuff about you don't know what you're talking about. You're not doing your research. You don't understand psychology, you know, blah, 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 blah. So let's get started. This person said, for the safety of others, please stop misinforming people. So they're already starting this off by being very inflammatory. They're making it seem like, and, and they're also making it seem like they're just really concerned about the populace, you know? And they say, this video is entirely your own opinion. Well, I do mention that these videos are my opinion because people like you didn't realize that. This person is going to a video from two years ago. And it's like, if you look at any of my videos now, I make it clear that these are my opinions, even though I have stated it in the videos where I don't have the disclaimer, but I explain that these are my opinions, my theories, my analysis. This is not stated as a fact, quote unquote. For you to be typing this a couple weeks ago, as if I'm not doing that already, is disingenuous. You can't say, please stop misinforming people because you're acknowledging that I'm still doing this stuff currently in your view. And that means that you're acknowledging that I'm still making these kind of videos. So for you to then disregard the fact that I actually explained that this is my opinion, that's where the manipulation comes in. Do you understand? Not to mention that they're also trying to paint a false narrative right from the beginning, that they're concerned and that I'm just this horrible person that they're about to like really try their best to, you know, dismantle and show to be the, the horrible person that I am. So they say, and Markiplier is supposed to be the one misinforming people. So again, you've seen one of my newest videos, you know that I have a disclaimer and you're pretending as if I don't explain that this is my opinion. So you're already a liar. They then say, I mean, obviously the statistics are going to support your argument because you made them up. So as you can see, very sarcastic, very pretentious. First of all, there's a lot of statistics that I bring up. If you look at my videos, 
I show the information on the screen. So I didn't make them up. I'm showing you the statistics. Then they say, because you made them up. For example, multiple studies have shown that people get less narcissistic as they get older. So first of all, you're not pointing to any of these studies. I'll show you the one that I found that I think they're talking about. And it's like, when were these studies a thing? Because you can't just say, oh, multiple studies show like at what time? Because this video is two years old and you're attacking it. Not to mention that I learned about that statistic two years before I even made the video. So new developments come out all the time. It doesn't mean that those studies are right. That's just the information that's happening right now. And I'm going to get into more of how BS studies are in the first place, but let me just show you what I think they're talking about. So this question here says, do narcissistic traits wane as people age, right? It says summary, for most people, narcissism weighs as they age. A new study reports that the magnitude of decline of narcissism traits is tied to specific career and personal relationship choices. I don't believe that that's true. Um, but I'll get back into how I think this study is bullshit in the first place. It says, however, this is not true for everyone. Some people remain just as narcissistic as they age at the age of 41 as they were during the late teens. 3% of subjects showed increased narcissistic traits between the age of 18 and 41. So this right here is wrong. The fact that it just says 3% of subjects showed increased narcissistic traits. There's been a new wave of um, people trying to perpetuate the idea that children are narcissistic and adults aren't, which is coming from narcissistic adults doing these studies. So there is a direct conflict of interest when conducting these studies. But we know that this is wrong because you can't diagnose children with narcissism. So if we're going to believe that only 3% of subjects show increased narcissistic traits between 18 and 41, and you can't diagnose children with narcissism, that means that only the teenagers, that's, that's the peak of narcissism when you're a teen. Do you understand how biased that sounds? Your brain isn't even finished developing yet when you're a teenager and narcissism develops as your brain develops. I'm just gonna cut in right here because I forgot to mention that with children and narcissism, for one, again, you can't actually diagnose children with narcissistic personality disorder. And another big reason why you can't say that narcissism exists in younger people is because for one, children between two to seven can't comprehend anyone thinking differently from them. And people tend to associate this with narcissism. Let me show you this. It says here, I'm gonna probably butcher his name because I'm bad with names. Piaget referred to the cognitive development occurring between ages two and seven as the pre-operational stage. In this stage, children increase their use of language and other symbols, their limitation, their imitation of adult behaviors and their play. Young children develop a fascination with words, both good and bad language. But it also says, invariably, children almost always choose the scene showing their own view of the mountain scene. According to Piaget, children experience this difficulty because they are unable to take on on another person's perspective. So people are mixing up egocentrism with narcissism. And they say that children are narcissistic because they can't comprehend anyone thinking differently from them. But we know for a fact that no matter how many studies prove otherwise, you can debunk it immediately because children don't have a sense of identity. How can you be a narcissist when you don't even see yourself as an individual? As I just read out to you, children are mimicking behaviors. They can't comprehend anyone thinking differently from them. So they often imitate what they see and mirror it. And so another reason why we know for a fact that kids don't have a sense of identity yet is because disassociative identity disorder Disorder actually exists. That's a real disorder that we just started to figure out. That's something that we just started to recognize as a real thing. And we just recently changed the name of it because we still didn't understand the concept of it. But disassociative identity disorder proves that we go through a stage of development with our own identity where we develop and create an identity, a sense of self. So again, that's one of the many reasons why you can't diagnose a child with narcissism. And the reason why children show narcissistic traits is probably because in those studies, they're going off of what they've learned at home. They're mimicking what they've seen with their parents. And we already know that if you have a narcissistic parent or even two narcissistic parents, it's more likely that you're gonna develop narcissism because the cycle of abuse continues. So. With all that being said, this is something that I've looked into for years. This guy, you know, when he says a recent study shows, the reason why you're showing a recent study and not a bunch of older concrete studies is because you just went to google.com and went off of the first thing that you saw. You don't know what you're talking about, but I've been looking into this for a very long time. I've been very obsessed with it. So you're just not gonna do a good job going up against me trying to debunk what I have to say because what I have to say is right and you're wrong. And narcissism develops as your brain develops. Let me show you this. 
It says narcissistic personality disorder affects more males than females. And it often begins in the teens or early adulthood. It begins often begins in the teens or early adulthood. That's just the beginning, which means that it's going to increase as you get older. And this is from mayoclinic.org. And this is talking about how narcissism works. So rather than look at studies that try to debunk things about narcissism, maybe you should read up on what it is in the first place, because it's basically debunking the entire foundation of what we've come to believe narcissistic personality disorder is. So you're wrong. And it says here, keep in mind that although some children may show traits of narcissism, this may simply be typical of their age and doesn't mean they'll go on to develop narcissistic personality disorder. And I'll get back into this in a little bit because I know why they're showing it. Um, and it's obviously my theory, no shit, but I'll still explain it. It says, although the cause of narcissistic personality disorder isn't known, some researchers think that in biological vulnerable children, parenting styles that are overprotective or neglectful may have an impact. So it's saying here that as your brain develops, your, your narcissism develops. Now, it will start to wean after that because everything hits a fucking peak. Like, I don't know who thought that I meant you're just going to get more and more narcissistic till the day you die. It never stops. Like, and as I've just said in this video, there's only so far you can go in the realms of toxicity. You can only be so toxic. So there's going to be a peak, obviously, but the peak is not in childhood. So this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. And the reason why, and this is obviously my theory, but it makes perfect sense. The reason why narcissism wanes when you get to the age of 40, 41, 40, whatever, is because of cognitive decline. Decline, right? When you, I'm actually gonna look it up and show you. Let's see. At what age does cognitive decline start? Oh, would you look at that? Cognitive decline can begin as early as age 45, warn experts. So of course your narcissism is going to wane as your cognition wanes because you kind of need to be there to have these, these type of disorders, you know? So at that point, you're going to be more so classified under something else rather than narcissism because now your lack of decline is starting to take over and that's becoming a more prevalent issue in your brain than narcissism. So it's just so stupid what this guy said, but you know, he's just saying multiple studies, recent studies, he doesn't add, have shown that people get less narcissistic as they get older. The recent study done by Cho Chopik and other psychologists is one of these studies. There is no link between optimism. So he's moving on to the next thing. So let me tell you why studies are bullshit. A lot of studies lack repetition. That's one good example. I'll even show you one of the things I'm looking at right here. Scientific study proves scientific studies can't prove anything. And this was December 6, 2017. So, you know, it's, it's like, this was before that guy's new study came out on narcissism. And we've seen this before, you know, when we see that there used to be ads that said the smoking was good for you. You know, there were promotions that would tell you that you don't have to worry about sugar. You should be concerned about fat when it comes to gaining weight. When now we know that sugar is the main cause of weight gain. So these people did studies and they showed this false evidence because you can prove almost anything in a study when you are very selective about where you do the study, how, on how many people, and what information you choose to take away from the study, how you interpret it. Because a lot of studies have to do with speculation, which is another reason why I talk about speculation on my channel, because it even affects how we conduct studies in this world. If you interpret a study wrong, you can say that it means the exact opposite of what it was showing, just because of everything that you are disregarding, you know, selective hearing and all that. So when he says, that these studies are gonna debunk what I have to say, you cannot just rely on a study to give you information. You have to also speculate. You have to also look at the information and the evidence, and then you have to contrast it or juxtapose it with actual evidence to see if that's the case. It takes a lot of critical thinking to see what studies are reputable and which ones aren't. And this guy clearly lacks enough to be able to see the truth. So he goes on to say, there is no link between optimism and sociopathy. Okay, so again, these are my theories, which you just said. These are my theories. Understand that psychology is still considered a pseudoscience. The reason why it's considered a pseudoscience is because one of the many reasons, because we haven't figured it out yet, which I don't think that that's a good reason since, you know, there's things in science that we haven't figured out, obviously, but also because psychology 
is still, we're, we're just starting to understand the human psyche. So when this dumbass says that there is no link between optimism and sociopathy, you just read to me a new study, right? Which means that it was a new development, right? But now you're telling me that my theory on psychology is wrong because there is no old study showing what I've said. Are you going to promote that we should look at new information or not? That there are things that we don't know yet or not? Like you can't just say, oh, well, there isn't a study yet, so you're wrong but then go, oh, well, there's a new study that proves something old that you said wrong. How are you going to do both at the same time, dude? So, and again, this person is very well worded. When I first started to read this, I was like, hmm, maybe I'm wrong. And I went to go look at the information that I've already looked at in the past. And I'm like, oh yeah, you sound stupid as hell. But moving on, this is something that people, I've never seen people point to a comment before. I said, go read it. He dismantled her. He, oh my God, blah, 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 blah. you know? So... This person says there is no link between optimism and sociopathy, logical or statistical. You can't say there is no link logically. How the fuck can you prove that, you fucking moron? Yes, there is a link between optimism and sociopathy because if you look at all the positive things that we're doing, toxic positivity does exist and it is a form of apathy. So you should look into that more since you clearly don't know what toxic positivity is because I haven't seen you mention it yet in this comment and I looked, I skimmed through it before I did this video, but I like to react to most things live. So I highly doubt he's going to bring up toxic positivity, but if he did, it would contradict what he's saying here because that's like a, a key to how optimism breeds sociopathy. The, what he doesn't realize is that abusers hijack positive things. It's called being a wolf in sheep's clothing. Abusers will take anything that's positive, adopt it, and make you think that they're positive when they're actually being abusive. And that's how we've gotten to a point where, you know, billionaire pe control the world. That's how we've gotten to a point where we have world hunger, where homelessness is still a thing, even though we could easily fix it and it would benefit us to fix these things. You know, the planet is dying. How are you going to tell me that optimism doesn't breed sociopathy when all of these net negatives, a net negative showing the conclusion of our existence on this planet, what we have concluded, what we have produced throughout the planet is so negative and so destructive. How are you going to say optimism doesn't breed sociopathy when everything is pointing towards it. It's because you're delusional. So here he says there is no link, even though it's my fucking theory. How are you going to call it a theory in one moment and then tell me, well, you're not looking at any study. Shut up. And he says there's no link between abuse or physiognomy either. What do you mean there's no link between abuse or physiognomy? In my video, if you go watch the fucking Matthew Patrick video, I didn't say there's a direct link between abuse and physiognomy. And he comes back to it. So, you know, we'll have to address it again, I believe. But I've explained that physiognomy, let me get the definition. Definition. So I've explained that when it comes to physiognomy and kinesics, I always say it wrong. This is the definition of physiognomy. I could click the sound thing, but like I don't have my headphones in and I'm recording. So there's no sound for me right now. I'm not going to pause just to pronounce it right. It says a person's facial features or expression, especially when regarded as indicative of character or ethic. So it's talking about your facial expressions and like the things on your face, because as you make these facial expressions over time, they leave a print on your face revealing, you know, certain expressions are associated with certain forms of mentality. Micro expressions, for example, is a big deal where you make certain micro expressions expressions based off of your mentality, you know, how you're thinking at the time or what you're trying to convey. And it comes out because when you suppress emotions, they're going to come out in some form. You can't actually suppress them. You got to have an outlet. And that's why we have micro expressions and microaggressions. So a, a lot of people misuse the word microaggression, but you know, microaggressions is just like passive aggressive behavior basically. And we all say passive aggressive, but everyone shames microaggression because it's the more technical term. Someone's going to be like, that's not what it means either. It's fucking idiots. So that's the meaning of physiognomy. If you look at kinesics, it says the study of the way in which certain body movements and gestures serve as a form of nonverbal communication. So again, looking at your body language to show what you're really thinking. So I never said there's a direct link along with abuse. I'm saying that you can use them to spot when someone's being abusive. And that's absolutely true. I've read some of the meanings of some of these expressions and it'll say things like, you know, um, if people have the, this certain type of teeth, it would be associated with them being a bully. I've read that, you know, and that's, that's one of the signs. And again, don't go off of that. You know, you guys haven't looked into it, then don't go off of that because the way the physiognomy and kinesics work is that you have to mix together a, a conclusion based off of everything. One little facial feature doesn't mean, oh, you got freckles, you're a nice person. Like it doesn't mean that you would have
have to have a bunch of other traits to back that up or else that's just an anomaly in a sense. So again, this is something that I've looked into, not you. You're just going on fucking Google again saying, is there a direct link between uh, abuse and physiognomy? No. Yeah, that's not how you learn things, you fucking moron. You need to look into what it means and then try to understand where I'm coming from. And if where I'm coming from is wrong, then you can say that I'm wrong. But instead, you're going off a of confirmation bias. You're researching things based off of the confirmation that you've already made. So you're looking for any evidence to support that rather than looking at the objective truth. So he says that, and then he says another example of being wrong is when you said, you're not crying because you're angry, you're crying because you're hurt. How the fuck is that wrong? Like anger is associated with being hurt. And then he says, funnily enough, your limbic system doesn't distinguish. Be okay, so, so this is what the limbic system is because this person is purposefully just trying to use pretentious words to try and, you know, sound smarter than he is because he's already been a fucking dumbass. He doesn't actually understand the limbic system. And I found something that, you know, you can make a whole video on the fucking limbic system. So instead, I'm just going to read this to you. It says the limbic system is not a discrete system itself, but rather a collection of structures anatomically related, but varying greatly in function. The term has been in use for about 70 years and does suggest a functionally unified system. But as this is not the case, some neuroscientists believe it should be abandoned. And you know, he's just going to look over that. If I brought up the fucking limbic system and he was trying to take me down, which he is, he would say, oh, well, some neuroscientists believe it should be abandoned. It says, regardless of terminology, collectively, we can think of the limbic system as a center um, for emotional responsiveness, motivation, memory formation, and integration, olfaction, and the mechanisms to keep ourselves safe. These are broad strokes to be sure, which is not to suggest that the neocortex is not involved in these functions, but these are the focal activities of the limbic system. So that's basically what he's talking about. He's talking about, you know, memory formation, motivation. I don't want to repeat it. You just heard what I said. And just how we think. He's just talking about how we think. Like that was the most pretentious way to say, hey, you know, um, your idea of how we... <laughs> Like I'm trying to explain this to you without like over explaining it. Cause I know I, I can go on forever, but what he's, I just found an even easier way to explain it. I'll still keep this in just so that you guys know, but it's just funny. Cause he's basically saying another example of you being wrong is that when you said you're not crying because you're angry, you're crying because you're hurt. Funnily enough, your idea on how we think doesn't distinguish between the two. It's like, why didn't you just say that? Why'd you have to bring up the fucking limbic system like a pretentious edgelord? So then he goes on to say, oh my God. So this guy is like the most pretentious person I've ever seen in life. <laughs> oh my God. So he just said, anger is enough to trigger the nervous system and affect your lacrimal glands. Just because it's enough to make you cry. That's what he was trying to say, but he said in the most pretentious way possible because he's an idiot. And ignoring that, what was the point of the sentence in the first place? Well, I told you the point of the sentence in the first place if you watch the fucking video. I said you're crying because you're hurt. And then I went on to explain how you're hurt. So go watch the fucking video again, because you're not listening. You're just listening for anything to disagree with. Not to mention, you know, he's being overly pretentious because he's not talking like this throughout the comment. He just uses these words a couple of times, you know, like lacrimal gland, you know, the limbic system, but everything else he's saying, he's using a lot of, um, you know, your, you, and he's saying doesn't, he's not speaking in a very grammatically appropriate way fashion. That's not how he normally talks. People who actually use these words speak differently. And everybody's like, oh my God, I don't understand what those words mean. So he must be really smart. <laughs> he says, and that's a form of manipulation, by the way, speaking in an overeducated way is what people use to hide, you know, their manipulation. So he is manipulative. He says, secondly, you know, absolutely nothing about psychology. That is hyperbolic to say the least and just factually incorrect. And if I said that you'd try to debunk me because that's absolutism. It's not that I don't know anything about psychology according to you. I don't know certain things, but you're only attacking what you view to be the weakest points. I've said so many things about psychology. You're not even breaking into the surface of it. So you can't just say, I don't know anything just because you found a few things that you think you can debunk by using technicalities off of bullshit studies. He says, you know nothing, you, you know absolutely nothing about psychology. You've gotten thin slicing wrong. So let's look up thin slicing because I know what this word means, but you don't. Thin slicing, which I've explained to people what it is, but I'm going to show you the technical term of it and tell you why this guy is so dumb. So I'm looking it up, but I'm going to continue reading everything that he said about it. So 
he says, you don't know anything about thin. You've gotten thin slicing wrong and you haven't used. Okay. So he moves on and says, I haven't used physiognomy correctly either. So he's just tell as many lies as you can, as fast as you can, which I've talked about before too. Just keep stating lies. Don't actually go into detail, put them back to back to create a false narrative and make people think that you're wrong or the person who you're attacking is wrong. But this is what thin slicing means since he just brushed right the fuck past it to move on to physiognomy. Thin slicing is a term used in psychology and philosophy. Um, philosophy. Do you not see this word? Philosophy? Philosophy. You know where theories come from, you fucking idiot? To describe the ability to find patterns and events based on thin slices or narrow windows of experience. The term means making very quick inferences about the state, characteristics, or details of an individual or situation with minimal amounts of information. So a lot of people explain how thin slicing can be even more intelligent than actual critical thinking because our instincts are going off of patterns and behavior that we've learned subconsciously, but consciously we don't know. This is a very wordy way of explaining how your instincts work because it just said inferences about the state characteristics or details of an individual. So you know, like your instincts on what kind of person someone is and where are your instincts located? Oh, your subconscious mind. So when I say you're thin slicing, is you assessing information in your subconscious mind? Yeah, that's like a very dumbed down way to describe it. And just like that other page I read to you, when that person was saying everything about the limbic system and they're like, okay, this is really dumbed down, you guys. You know, like that's not to say it's not including this too. When you have to dumb things down for people, you can't give them all the fucking information. So for you to, you know, try to say that I'm wrong because I'm giving you the most basic definition of what thin slicing is, which was fucking accurate as you can see right here. You're just, you're, this is a hit piece, by the way. This is an actual fucking hit piece. Like everything he's saying is fucking wrong. And you know, he moved right past it. He just said, you've gotten thin slicing wrong. Can you prove it motherfucker? Like, why didn't you prove it? Why did you just move on? You've gotten thin slicing wrong and you haven't used physiognomy correctly either. It's got nothing to do with detecting lies. Yeah, it does. You, you're seriously trying to tell me that if someone says I don't smoke and you use physiognomy and see that they have smoker wrinkles, that they're not lying. They clearly smoke. There are wrinkles that form on your mouth when you smoke that are different from the wrinkles that form on your mouth when you play the flute, for example. So when people tell a lie, you can use physiognomy and kinesics to see if it's actually true or not. So when he said that it was just honestly like the dumbest fucking thing, because it's like, they're not one in the same, but you can use it for detecting lies. And for you to say that you can't is a disservice to the, the terms themselves and the people who came up with them. Because you're basically saying it doesn't mean anything then. Who, how can you tell what kind of person someone is? You certainly can't tell through physiognomy and kinesics. That's basically what you're promoting if you say that you can't tell if someone's lying through that. <laughs> it's not credible enough. So he moves on from that and just says, you've also used multiple words incorrectly. So again, hit piece. Like he's saying a few words that I've used wrong, doesn't prove it. And then uses that to back up his blanket statement of you've gotten a lot wrong. So that people think, wow, she must've gotten even more wrong. And it says such as speculating. I'm a psychology major. Well, bitch, you don't have a fucking PhD. So I don't give a fuck because even people with PhDs don't know what they're talking about. Even the fucking therapist, she doesn't have a PhD, but even the therapist from the Shane Dawson documentary, she was just like, oh my God, I think that you're an empath, Shane. And he's the furthest thing from a fucking empath. And that's a fucking licensed therapist. So I don't care what your credentials are. You're kind of fucking fucking stupid. And psychology majors always think that they know everything. I swear to God, they get on my fucking nerves. I can't stand psychology majors. I can't stand psychology majors, history majors, or math majors, or tech majors. They all think that they've unlocked the secrets of the universe and they just know every fucking thing. And English majors, they're so fucking annoying. I'm a, I'm a psychology major. And then he says, not an English major. <laughs> yeah, I can tell you're not because you're not using words correctly, stupid. But I'm certain that you have to speculate every word doesn't make sense as a sentence. Yes, it does. You have to speculate every word when people think, when, when, they, when people talk. You have to speculate everything that they're saying so that you can understand the truth. He says, you speculate on or about, you speculate on or about. Okay, I don't understand what the fuck he's trying to say by that. Whatever. He says, I also believe you meant inflection, not fluctuation. Probably. Oh, that's the one word that I might've gotten wrong out of how many? Let's see. And fluctuation, fluctuation define to see if I know what I'm talking about or not. And if so, that's the first thing he's gotten right. Inflection define. 
And he said he thinks, so he doesn't even, you don't even know if I used it wrong. Like, do you not know what they mean? The fuck? All right, so here's what he's saying. Fluctuation means an irregular rising or falling in number or amount of variation. Yeah, I meant fluctuation. Do you see how far he's going to try to correct me? I meant fluctuation, like when your voice rises or falls. Yeah, an irreg it says an irregular rising and falling in number or amount of variation. So when I say the fluctuation of like the way that you're talking, yeah. But then he says, I meant inflection, which it says a change in the form of a word, typically the ending to express a grammatical function or attribute such as tense, mood, person, number, case. Why can't I mean both? Like you're acting like they're antonyms of one another or something. They're in the same realm. Like if you look at the um the synonyms, it says variation, shift, change, alteration, right? And then when you look at the definition of inflection, it says a change, which was one of the synonyms for fluctuation. It says in the form of a word, typically the ending. And I'm not talking about the ending of a word. So no, I don't mean inflection because it says typically the ending. I'm talking about the whole fucking word, especially the start. And I'm talking about when you speak, like the amount of words that you use has to do with fluctuation the amount of or, or the the way that your tone moves around does have to do with fluctuation maybe there's a better word for it but i definitely don't mean inflection so now you're just fucking nitpicking dude and then he says you also confuse arrogance with pride no i fucking didn't like arrogance can be applied to pride it's not one and the same but i meant pride and then he says and so on you're not even quoting me like you're just saying you're wrong about this you're wrong about that you're wrong about this you're wrong about that like you can't just say a few like fucked up faked ass facts at the beginning of your statement and then just start saying I'm wrong about everything and moving on. You better fucking prove it, motherfucker. He said, you also confuse arrogance with pride and so on. What do you mean and so on? And then he says, that's not what brainwashing is. What's not what brainwashing is? Like, what are you talking about? If you want to know some actual psychology or brain anatomy, I'd recommend watching a few of the game theorist videos. I've seen a lot of them. I'm still subscribed to Matthew Patrick. I have a lot of respect for Matthew Patrick, which is why I said I think that he's a nice guy. So you made a false speculation just now. Nobody's debunking you on that you are assuming that I don't watch his fucking videos when I do and he's not a fucking he's not a fucking a uh, neuroscientist so why would you recommend for me <laughs> this fucking psych major just recommended for me to watch a random youtuber's idea of neurology instead of some neurologist videos <laughs> like what the fuck you're so stupid I've never talked to a psychologist that's like you should watch game theory if you want to know <laughs> oh my god Oh my God. So then he says, I can confirm that they're pretty accurate. You're not a neurologist. He just told me if you want to know some actual psychology, right? But he was talking about brainwashing, which is not, you're not going to look at psychology. You're going to look at neurology for that. And then he, <laughs> he's a psych major. He's not even, he doesn't even have a PhD. And he's not a neurologist. Oh my God. There's just so much bullshit. There's so much bullshit in this fucking comment. He then goes on to say, and this is what everyone was recommending, by the way. This is what he's saying word for word. He said, your main point is that you're speculating Yes, speculation, which would g back up the fact that these are my theories. And he says, and yet you claim everything is based off of statistic and fact. Based, you fucking idiot. Dude, do you not know what based means? The base, the foundation, the start. And then it goes on to something else. The foundation is built off of statistic and facts. And then I theorize and build off of it. Like you, you're bringing up the limbic system and all this shit and you don't understand what the word based means, what a basis is for something. Holy God, it's, it's four letters. What the hell? You're based off of statistic and fact. Well, here's the definition of speculate for you. And then he types the forming of a theory or a conjecture without firm evidence. Okay, so the forming of a theory or conjecture without firm evidence. And then it says theorizing, but let's look up the definition of theorizing. It says the forming of a theory or theories about something. And you want to know something that psychology is built off of? Theories. So maybe it's not me that's the problem in this case. Maybe it's the fact that people associate theorizing with speculation. Maybe that's the problem because psychology comes from theorizing. That was kind of the whole basis. <laughs> How are you going to talk about, oh my God, like, and you don't even know the thing that he doesn't understand is the speculation. You can interpret this definition, people, you can interpret it. It could be saying the forming of a theory or conjecture without firm evidence. Get it? So just the theory, that's one thing, 
or conjecture without firm evidence. It's not saying a theory and conjecture. It says or. So you don't know if they're applying the firm evidence to the theory part, which I don't think that they are because the fucking basis of psychology. But again, he's not an English major and it's not like it takes any common sense to know what these things mean. He couldn't possibly just use that to get these words right. So he says, if you don't know, So he, it's so ironic. He says, that's what you did for most of the video. At least you know what speculation is, even if you don't know how to use it in a sentence. You don't know how to (laughs) fucking, you just misread this sentence. Like the theory is separate from the conjecture part. So of course conjecture doesn't have firm evidence, but theories can have, like, it's not, they didn't mean it for the same. I'm going crazy looking at that. He thought that they were both applied to it. I feel like I have to over explain myself because, because people have selective hearing. Like it's, I'm not redundant because, you know, because of some sort of illness or something. There are a lot of people where they become more redundant the more they have to argue with idiots. So yeah, anyway, he then says, you don't even know if you don't know how to use it in a sentence. Also, please don't give advice about depression. Um, leave me the fuck alone. I'm going to do what I want. Or suicide for that matter. Um, I have a lot of suicidal friends and I've been suicidal, so I'll do what the fuck I want. And then he says, it's dangerous. You aren't a psychologist. Neither are you. So shut the fuck up because I've actually consulted my advice with psychologists. I've consulted it unlike you. You're just going off of your own stupid brain. And your incorrect and only advice to depress motherfuckers may actually prove to be detrimental to their mental health. No, I have chronic depression and chronic PTSD, first of all. So I'm one of those motherfuckers. That's why I call them motherfuckers because I'm I'm referring to myself. Uh, Secondly, I've consulted people with PhDs. I've consulted licensed people, several, okay? Not to mention that I am one of those people and most of my friends are those people, if not all of them actually. So you're the person who can't really comment on this shit, not me. He said, actually, no, not all hurt people are out to cause harm actually. I never said that. I said there is a phrase that we use called hurt people hurt people. You're taking it out of context. That's a term that we actually use because it's a thing that happens. People do follow the cycle of abuse. How dare you try to act like that's not a thing. So no, I never said everybody. So don't put words in my mouth. He says, and yes, they can have moments of happiness. Yes, they can have moments of happiness. I said, just because they give you a hug doesn't mean that they're happy. That's what I said. I was saying that it doesn't necessarily mean he was happy in that moment. And so for you to say that was the real you, that was the focus of what I was talking about. You were denying a suicidal person's feelings, which is going to make them more suicidal. And yes, I have also consulted this with licensed professionals. So go fuck yourself, you unlicensed moron. It says also socially unsure means exactly what it sounds like. It's called the English language, please learn it. You're not, you're not even an English major, you just said. You don't even know the fucking language. You've already gotten everything wrong so far. It's all projection. And I'm saying that the socially unsure was a nice way of saying something else. Like it was inaccurate. Just because you're defining socially unsure doesn't mean that he used it right. The fuck? He then goes on to say, another definition you seem to be, I seem to be or I am, pick one. Like get some fucking confidence, stupid. It says incorrect about is optimism. Optimism and positivity aren't the same thing. I know that it's not, but they are still a product of one another in a lot of instances. Are you gonna fucking deny that? Like the fuck? It says, this is worth saying since you have the idea that these words are interchangeable. No, I never said they're interchangeable, which is why I use them both. If I thought they were interchangeable, I would just only use one. I use them both. I've specifically specified at times that optimistic people do the positive shit. I say that all the fucking time. So I know that they're not one and the same and you're not listening. You're not doing your fucking research on my own videos. Even the video you just watched. So then he says, they are the same thing. This is worth saying since you have the idea that these are interchangeable. No, he says positivity unlike optimism makes no assumptions about the external world. Yes, it does. You can have a positive outlook on the world. That's a term that people use, a positive outlook. So you're just wrong when you say that. He says, instead, positivity technically focus on how we react to it. Technically. Again, he's just arguing off of technicalities. Like, shut up. In other words, positivity is about doing something. Your version of realism or pessimism is actually negativity. No, it's not. So again, let's look at what a net positive and a net negative is. A net positive, which is going to help you know the definition of a net negative. A net positive is a philosophy that is based on trying to maintain a positive balance in your life by doing more good than you do harm and by contributing more than you take, right? So a net negative, I'll even read that. 
for fuck's sake. If your assets exceed your liabilities, you have, you have a positive net worth. Conversely, if your liabilities are greater than your assets, you have a negative net worth. A negative or deficit net worth does not necessarily imply bankruptcy. So that's the definition of net positive and somewhat the definition of net negative, which is just honestly the inverse of the other definition. That's why they didn't really define it twice. When you look at the world, as I've already said, and you see that the planet is literally fucking dying. We are producing a net negative on this planet. We are again living in a net negative situation, which shows that something is going wrong. When the richest people in the world are toxic. Look at this um, thing about Wall Street. It says, is Wall Street full of psychopaths? It says one estimate suggests that one out of every 10 employees on Wall Street is a psychopath. That's probably off, but consider how many almost psychopaths there are instead. So this person just said that's probably off. This is toxic positivity, by the way. They're not doing the study. They're not, you know, someone with a PhD. They're not a neurologist or anything like that. And they just assume that's probably off. It couldn't be one out of every 10 employees or a psychopath on Wall Street. That's too negative. You know, this is the shit I'm talking about. It just, it's in everything. Even when I'm trying to show you a fucking study, some reporter doesn't believe it. <laughs> anyway, so, you know, he says, um, he says this shit and it's like, we're living in a world where it's revealing who we are. The planet's dying. People are poor. People are suffering. We, we don't take care of each other. You know, everybody's in shit for themselves. People keep repeating history. So we're not growing. We're not progressing mentally. Like there's so many there's so much evidence out there of what I'm talking about for him to deny it is just lunacy. And then he says, your version of realism or pessimism is actually negativity. No, having a realistic view on the planet, you're gonna realize that a lot of shit is negative, which I have explained. I explained it in the video. So for you to then disagree with that as if I didn't say this already, and again, you're not quoting me, is a disservice to anyone who actually wants to learn something. It says, you've decided the world is bad and you don't have the drive or motivation to do anything about the very problems you complain about. It's so funny, one of my friends who's been suicidal has actually attempted suicide. She said that my videos give her hope about the world. She was like, you know, your videos are actually positive. Positive. And I said, how? Because I never, you know, took it from that perspective because everybody's always telling me how negative I am. And she was like, well, when you talk about all these issues in the world, you always talk about what specifically the problem is and that if we stop doing those things, if, or if we think on this more, you know, you talk about how we can fix these issues by, you know, recognizing our own problems and you explain how not recognizing them hurts us and all these things, you give me hope that we can actually fix the issues that we have. That's what she told me. So to see that this guy is saying, I'm not doing anything about it. I'm just saying the world is bad. Like you don't understand the point. You don't understand how important philosophy is. I do hate philosophers. I'm not changing that, but that's because anyone can become one. Philosophy is so important. Psychology is so important. And there is no, that's mostly a mental thing and a verbal thing. You know, there's not a lot of physical things you can do when it comes to uncovering the secrets of how we think. So I am doing something about it when I make these videos. I made these videos because I don't see anybody talking about the stuff that I talk about. So he just claims I'm not doing anything about it because he thinks that what I'm promoting, first of all, how are you gonna say I'm not doing anything about it, but you just said it wasn't a problem? Like, is it a problem or not? You're displaying right now, double think. You're acting as if it's a problem, but you're also acting as if it isn't. So then he says, you've just given up. Have I really given up if I keep fucking confronting it and talking about what the solution is, you fucking moron? He says, the worst bit is that you're proud of it. I am proud of my fucking videos, yep, but I'm not proud out of giving up so stop taking me out of context because I never gave up. He says additionally positivity has and this is speculation by the way he's just speculating you're proud of giving up you just make up whatever you want and then criticize it okay that's what we're doing. Additionally positivity has nothing to do with avoiding controversy. Yes it does. It's called toxic positivity. Toxic positivity. It's a term look it up you fucking idiot. It says, so I don't really understand why you blabbered on about that for a half hour. Because it's prevalent in society and it's killing us. That's why. Markiplier just gave advice to 25 million people at the beginning of a
pandemic to go to the grocery store before we had any measures to protect ourselves from the virus. So he indefinitely sent people to their deaths. Nobody's gonna recognize that when that's what happened. That is toxic positivity because he's trying to give out this positive outlook saying, don't worry, go to the store. But if you don't worry about, you know, catching this virus and you go to the store to go buy stuff, you're touching all, everybody's touching the same things. It was raining outside at the time. People are gonna get sick and they're gonna fucking die. That's the advice that he just gave. When later it came out that you weren't supposed to go to the store and stock up, experts said. So that's a form of how toxic positivity is killing us. That's a small form, by the way. There are much bigger examples. But since you're a Markiplier fan, there's a fucking example for you. He says, also speaking with knowledge of brain anatomy, what knowledge? Your fucking college degree? Shut up. He says, there's been research done that negativity leads to stupidity. There's been research done that depressed people are smarter. So how about that? Like, there's so many things. I'm just going to show you some of these things on my screen, but I could, I've looked into this shit in the past and it says here, bad news for the highly intelligent scientific America. It says, why are intelligent people more prone to mental illness? Is there a link between intelligence and depression? You know, and it's the fact that there's a lot of studies that have proven that depressed people are smarter. The fact that you're saying there's been research done, the negativity leads to stupidity. There's been research done that depressed people live smarter. And again, pessimists live longer. So what are you talking about? Like you're just looking at any study you can find and there's a lot of other ways to debunk these stupid studies you're looking at. He says, okay, maybe not exactly. Then why'd you say in the first place? But <laughs> he's such a fucking idiot. There has been proof that negativity is detrimental to neuron activity in the hip in the hippocampus. Okay, so again, I've seen studies that say depressed people are smarter, but happy people live longer. They've talked about that. But what they're what they mean by happy people are people who just aren't depressed. And that would make sense because, you know, depressed people can kill themselves. Depressed people have more stress. So they develop, you know, health issues that comes with stress. So it's not that it makes you stupid, but it could give you some illnesses that might attack your brain maybe. But what form of stupidity are we talking about? Are you talking about a loss of cognition? Are you talking about an academic decline? Like what form of stupid, there's different, like he's not being nuanced at all with any of this. And he says, um, which is part of the brain that plays a big role in memory and learning. Like, okay, but you're not pointing to any studies about that. Like there has been proof that negativity is detrimental. Like you don't know how reputable that is though. And it says, it's not rare to find good people in this world. Yes, it is. You think that the bad people are the good people. That's your problem. It's true that bad people prey on good people. No shit. And he says, you know what else is true? He just moved on, by the way. He just said, it's not rare to find good people in this world. Yes, it is. Like, you can't just make a claim. I disagree with you on this. And since I have been pretending as if I know I'm talking about, people think that this is right too. No, you're not right. It's hard to find good people. And that's why everybody's so fucking fake. If people were so good, you wouldn't have to be fake all the time in, in the professional world. You know, you wouldn't have to network so much because people would just take care of one another. We're not taking care of each other. Go talk to all the homeless people and tell them that it's not hard to find good people. Go talk to all the veterans that kill themselves, you know, every single day. Tell them that it's not hard to find good people. Go talk to all the immigrants and people seeking asylum and so on that are in cages. Talk to them and tell them that it's not hard to find good people. Go talk to people who aren't privileged such as yourself and tell them that it's not hard to find good people because people like you make their lives miserable and you don't realize that because your stupid ass is living in the fucking moment. And that's why I hate people like you. I hate people like you because you're making the world a worse place and you're getting us killed. So then he says, you know what else is true? Bad people push good people away. No, they don't. What kind of bad people? There's different types of bad people. And if you look at anything, you know, manipulative people network with people who benefit them. So you can't say bad people push people away. Like manipulative people are bad people and they network with whoever benefits them. He says not everyone, he didn't point to a study by the way, he just said it. He said not everyone, then he says not everyone can tolerate your impudence. Again, just throwing in a big word. And I, I know what impudence means, but I'm saying look at how he talks. He doesn't talk like that regularly and then he just throws a word in to sound smart. And it's a false claim. That's what he's hiding. The fact that it's a false claim. He uses this big word when he's saying that, you know, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. And so people are like, oh my God, he said impudence. He must know what he's talking about. Oh my God. Maybe you've pushed all the good people away. No, I got friends. I don't know why people think I don't have friends. <laughs> It's actually very easy for me to make friends. A lot of people want to be around me, but I do push people away because I don't like them. I just keep decent people around and that's it. I don't talk to anybody else. He says, maybe you didn't come across them, in which case I'm sorry. No, you're not. You're doing a hit piece right now. I hate it when they say, I'm sorry, or I'm trying to help you. Or, you know, if this happened and 
I feel for you. Honestly, no, I'm honestly sorry. No, you're not. He says, but that statement that good people are hard to find is your opinion based on your experience? No, it's not based on my experience. It's based off of my observation on the internet in real life from stories of other people and every single source that I could find. Every source I could find, I've used to come to that conclusion. You are basing your views on your life experience, not me, so stop projecting. He says, here's some real psychology for you. Pfft, okay. Dunning-Kruger effect, and it applies entirely to you. What is it? Look at how pretentious he is. Like, you're not sorry, you just apologize, and now you're just like, what is it? Since you clearly lack the ability to do basic research, which we already know he wasn't doing any research, I'll explain it to you. People with low ability at a task tend to overestimate their ability. Oh my fucking God. Here's an example. You are not an empath. No matter how many times you say you are, I am an empath and I know what empaths are. You don't even know what one is. You can't tell me that I'm not an empath when you're not a fucking empath and you don't know anything about empaths. I've done research on empaths and I've had people who are HSP actually tell me that I'm an empath. I've talked to licensed psychologists, people with PhDs who have also said that I'm an empath. So I'm not just saying it over and over to make it true. I've actually consulted professionals. You don't know anything about my life, dude. So he's like, you're not an empath no matter how much you say that you're an empath. And he says, um, no matter how many times you say you are, you're, you lack the basic ability to understand a man who's just lost his best friend to suicide. No, I understand it. I think that it's a sad thing. A man who just lost his, his best friend to suicide, he's feeling terrible. You cretin. You see how angry he is? He was trying to act neutral, but he just called me a fucking cretin. He said, did it ever occur to you that those tears wipes were for real tears? I literally said that they were real. <laughs> he didn't watch the video. I, I even explained, I was like, I think that he's actually sad. The first time I mentioned the tear wipe, I said, I think he's actually sad. I think he really is crying but I'll get back to why I'm pointing it out later. And then I did point it out. And you want to know what conclusion I drew to this guy who talks about not doing research and he didn't even research the video he was watching? When I finally came back to it, I said, people feel like they have to include tear wipes in their videos and that they can't cut them out because you have to show people how sad you are so that people believe you're sincere. That's what I said. And I said that that's fucked up. I said it's sad that even when he's making a video like this, he has to consider coming across as authentic or people are going to think that it's fake. That was my point. I didn't say he was fake. I know that it was real. Like, oh my God, he just took me out of context so much. This is such a fucking hit piece, dude. He says, um, did you ever consider that those wipes were real? Yeah, but you clearly didn't see that. He said, you have the emotional intelligence of a naked mole rat. No, I don't. You do though. <laughs> and also rats are really smart. <laughs> I'm just saying rats are really smart. I don't know if mole rats are smart, but I know that rats are smart. Mole rats, smart. Mole rats, smart. Let's see. Well, the EQ of a naked mole rat is rather low. Several features suggest they may nevertheless be quite intelligent. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> it says as outlined above, they communicate widely among con specifics. So in a sense, they could be intelligent. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, stop comparing me to shit that you don't know anything about. Rats are smart. Anyway, it says, if this is how you react to suicide, I pity those poor people who come to you for advice. I've literally prevented suicide countless times in my life. I can't tell you how many side of people I've talked to who told me that they didn't kill themselves because of me. Online and in real life. I used to do it in high school. Um, I've done it online a lot and anybody who I come across. I even, one of my friends even told me, you make me want to be a good person, which is another suicidal friend of mine. You know, I've had a few friends actually tell me that. You make me want to be a good person. You make me want to be a better person. Or they've told me you're the reason, like I said, you're the reason why I didn't kill myself because this and this and that. I just had somebody thanking me just a couple of days ago saying that, you know, I saved their life because they were just like in a state where they were just walling themselves off from society and just giving up. And they said that I got them out of that, that I give them motivation to keep trying. And that they asked me like, how do I better myself? How do, like I talk to people, my, my pet's drinking water right now, but I'm just gonna keep talking. It's like, I, I talk about this stuff in my spare time. You know, I do care. And you don't know anything about that because you don't care to get to know me. You're just attacking something because it's showing you who you are and you're scared. So he says, I pity those poor people who come to you for advice. You are not understanding of emotion. Yeah, I am. And he said, and you definitely aren't aware of the science behind it. Yeah, I am. And you're not. He says, you have this idea that you're more intelligent than other people. I'm intelligent than some, more intelligent than some people, but not everybody. Every, like there's different forms of intelligence. And I've talked about this before, which he doesn't know anything about because he doesn't do his research. But 
Even if you were the smartest person in the world, somebody's going to come along and build off of that. So you're never going to be the smartest. So, you know, there's no point in trying to be the best at things because someone's always going to come along and be better. But on top of that, there's different forms of intelligence. So you can be smart when it comes to like, you know, building computers, but you could know nothing about, you know, ocean life. You could be the best when it comes to fucking psychology. Uh, since he's like, I'm a psych major, I know all this. But you could be really stupid when it comes to math. You know, there's just, there's different forms of intelligence and those are some pretty basic examples, but you get my point. So for me to say that I'm smarter than other people, smarter in what? When it comes to emotional intelligence, yeah, I'm sorry. But as an empath, if you're an empath, you should be pretty fucking smart when it comes to emotional intelligence. And to say that you're not is honestly just like, if you recognize that you're not smart in something, well, why not work on it if you want to be smart in that thing? Like it, he's just, it's making no sense. He's just so dumb. So he says, um, you have this idea that you're more intelligent than other people saying things like you're slow or average people don't understand this quote. Yes. Average people do not understand the theories that I have been developing because I believe that I'm intelligent in these things. Is it not okay to believe in yourself? like the fuck they don't understand it the world is dying people are apathetic they don't care about one another so yes i think that they're slow when it comes to that shit and you're proving it right now again you know very little about the topics you talked about which is a lie and uh you didn't have the ability to research them yes i did and i show facts all the time now so why are you arguing on a video where i wasn't really posting the stuff that i was talking about whereas now i do you saw a new video that was posting information you went to a video from two years ago to debunk me when you're a mark player fan and came from videos that had information on the screen it had the disclaimer that it's my theory it had all this shit and you went away from it to go debunk something from back then like the fuck if that's not a hit piece i don't know what the fuck is your logic is incorrect and at times circular you're a markiplier fan he repeats himself non-fucking stop shut the fuck up when it's circular like nobody even talks like that again pretentious edgelord nobody talks like that nobody says circular just say repetitive you know my logic isn't incorrect and when i am repeating myself is because i have to deal with people who are hard of hearing like you that's what happens and i already said this but if you look at anybody who is used to arguing with idiots they start repeating themselves more because dumbasses have selective hearing and they don't know how to fucking listen oh it says you think you're better than others I'm not, everybody's better than people in something. I don't think I'm better than everybody. And I love how he's not saying I think I'm better than everyone because it's obvious that I don't think that. I can't think that I'm better than people. Like the fuck? Yes, you're better than people in certain things. I'm better at making jewelry than people who have never made jewelry in their life for the most part. Yeah, that would make sense because I've done it and they haven't. So it would make perfect fucking sense. If someone's a plumber, they're better at plumbing than I am. I don't know shit about plumbing. So if they say I'm better at plumbing than you, if we were just talking about what we're better than people in, like not bragging, but like this topic right now, if I was talking to a fucking plumber and they're like, yeah, I know more about plumbing than you do. They're not bragging. It's a technical fucking statement. And he says, I'm not sure what criteria you based to come to this conclusion. Shit that you'll never fucking understand. That's the saddest part. The criteria that I use to come to this conclusion is shit that you will never understand understand in your fucking life because you're too busy being stuck in your own ways you probably are narcissistic and that's probably why you were so offended about what i had to say about narcissism and you just lack basic comprehension he says again you know very little about the topics you research blah, blah blah he says you think you're better than others i'm not sure what criteria you use to come to this conclusion he says i'm not sure what criteria you use to come to this conclusion but we can disregard logical intelligence or kindness from the list no the reason why i made the video on matthew is because what if matthew's son becomes Become suicidal when he gets older. What if his wife becomes suicidal? What if his friends become suicidal and he does that again? You might not like what I had to say because it's negative, but it's meant to produce a net positive if you took my fucking advice. Acknowledge suicidal people's feelings. Do not tell them that they feel better than they fucking feel. Allow them to complain. Allow them to say that they feel like shit and talk to them about it. Making them look on the bright side is going to drive them further into if they're coming to you and telling you that they don't feel okay it's different if you're talking to somebody who's trying to do the positive shit but when a suicidal person is coming to you about their problems and you keep responding with this positive shit they're you're gonna drive them to suicide i know because i've talked to countless suicidal people and experts on this shit and that's the reason why i say it unlike you who just went to college and that's all you did. You didn't even get a fucking PhD. You're not a psychologist. You're a psych major. You're not even a fucking, you're not even a fucking therapist. Like you don't know shit. I'm trying to prevent 
All right, you're not. You think you're better than others. I'm not sure what criteria you did to come to that conclusion, but we can disregard logical intelligence kindness from this fact. He says, in fact, I think you probably fall into the category of stupidity. Do you see how pretentious that was? In fact, I think you actually might fall into the category of stupidity. Hmm. According to another study, confident ignorance. It's not confident ignorance. And you're speculating again. You're using studies to speculate right now, but you just criticize me for doing that. Like, what the fuck? It says also because you love narcissists so much, which I don't. I literally say I hate narcissists. So what are you talking about? Also because you love narcissists so much. Surprise, I think I have enough information to tell you that you probably are one. No, you don't have enough information. I'm not a narcissist. I've been to psychologists. I've been diagnosed with the same thing every fucking time. I have chronic depression and I have chronic PTSD. I mean, I have a bunch of other fucking issues, but narcissism ain't one of them. I've never been diagnosed with narcissism. They don't even think that I have narcissistic. They, you wanna know what they tell me? They've told me that somebody at my state of life should either be dead or a serial killer because of what I've been through. And they said they have no idea how I am the person that I am right now. And they said that I should write a book because they were like, more people need to know about people like you because most people honestly turn out to be, like they never even mentioned narcissism. This is how stupid he is. Because they were like, more people need to know about people like you because most people honestly turn out to be, and they've said this because they've talked to people like me who have killed themselves or grown up to be those things. And so I'm an anomaly. That's not me being narcissistic. It's that I know that what I have to say is important. And I used to not want to talk about this stuff. If you go back to my old videos, I never wanted to talk about this shit. I have one video where there's no thumbnail, nothing, because I was like, oh, I don't know if I should talk about this or not. I really didn't want to share my opinion. And I changed because my friends put it in perspective for me. Suicidal people, people have been su they were like, you know, if you don't talk about this stuff, it's like, they, they were telling me for years, you need to share your opinions with the world. And I'm like, why? And they're like, because eventually they said, because, you know, if you went through everything you went through, you know that there's at least a thousand other people who have been through the same thing, if not millions, and they're going to kill themselves. And when they put that in perspective, I started to feel responsible for it because again, I used to be an altruistic empath. And I'm like, oh, well, if I don't talk about it, then these people won't have any solution. Like there won't be any solution out there because no one talks about this shit. And again, I've consulted licensed people about this. People do not talk about this stuff. They don't. It's not a narcissistic view. They don't talk about it. There's a reason why people keep asking me, do you know any channels that are like yours? No, I don't because they don't talk about it. Not the way that I do and not the stuff that I talk about specifically. So I started doing this because I did not want to. And my friends who have been to, I don't have been in those situations and psychologists with PhDs have told me that I should write a book. Doctors who have graduated, they're doctors. They've said, oh, you should, you should write a book. You should talk about this stuff. I've been through this. And that's what motivated me to talk about these things. I'm not a narcissist and you don't know what you're talking about. I've actually, you know, gone to, you know, seek help and all that stuff for my depression and all that stuff. And it wasn't helpful, but I'll get into that another day. So he doesn't know anything that he's talking about, but I knew he was, I knew he was going to call me a narcissist before he even got to it. So I love how he's acting like it was suspense speculating I could tell that he was gonna say it before he even fucking said it because it's not even hard to figure out once you know what to look for you can predict that stuff he says I have enough information to tell he said even though I don't have enough to definitely diagnose you as one you don't have enough to assume it either I'm not gonna say I officially diagnose you as a narcissist even though I'm not a psychologist so I can't give you a fucking diagnosis in the first place but I am going to say I believe you're one okay then you're diagnosing me as one like stop being technical you're diagnosing me if a psychologist says I believe this person is a narcissist. They're unofficially diagnosing someone as a narcissist. Like, fuck you. He says, you're so arrogant that you think you know everything about the world and human nature, even though I've said the exact fucking opposite. I said, we haven't figured out enough in psychology. There's so much for us to learn. I said that I don't know everything. I've said that, you know, I'm not the smartest, even in the stuff that I'm the best in because of this and this and that, which I've already explained. Like he's just making up shit. He's just making it up. Can you quote me? Stop speculating. I thought that you said speculating was a bad thing because there's no evidence based off of it. And you are ironically using your bullshit studies to come up with speculative assertions on my character. But you just uh, criticize me for the same thing. And I, oh no, maybe you shouldn't be doing that. That's bad. Like, look at how you're treating suicidal people. Anybody can use that fucking argument. Anybody can use that argument. That's not how you argue things. Like what you're doing is dangerous for me. I could go and kill myself because of this. I'm not actually arguing that, but I could just like you are. So then he says, you know 
nothing about the human psyche and it genuinely worries, it doesn't worry you. You're just doing a hit piece because you're a Markiplier fan. It genuinely worries me that people who know nothing about anything spread this sort of information. Projection. You know nothing about this shit and you're spreading misinformation to the point where people are pointing to your retarded fucking comment. Then he says, people are far more complex than you think they are. You need to say that to a fucking mirror because you're the one who's looking at the most basic bullshit and you're not being nuanced about anything. You're not being detailed about anything. You're just making statements and moving on. Just make them and move. Someone can have a terrible life and still have a moment of happiness. I never said that they couldn't. I literally said in the video, just because you see a happy moment does not mean that this is the real them. Just because you see a happy moment doesn't mean that they feel better. So I, I recognize that they can have a happy moment. I don't know what made you think I didn't. Like I never said that. And I, I just, I'm just like, can you guys criticize me on something I've said? criticize what I say stop putting words in my mouth like it I don't know how to put it into words yet and I have been trying to find a way to phrase it right but it pisses me off that all these people have such an issue with me on things that I've never said or believed and again it's all back to the black mirror theory like that's the reason why they're so angry at me they're not actually mad at me they're mad at their own fucking dark reflection but just the fact that you're typing this shit you're mad at stuff that's not real it's delusional it never happened what are you mad about it didn't happen it says abuse people can be at moments unburdened by their past. I was abused severely. Got bullied by my entire school. Came from an abusive upbringing. You know, I've been abused. I got abused almost everywhere that I fucking went my whole childhood. I've been through most things that people can bring up. You know, I understand a lot of problems that people have gone through and that's not a narcissistic thing. That is again, coming from licensed psychologists, therapists, social workers, coming from people with PhDs, doctors. Okay. So I, even somebody who's um, becoming a doctor, another friend of mine, like, well, they're, they're becoming a psychiatrist. Even they've said the same thing. So I've even been around people who are in your situation, who at least aren't officially licensed yet. And they also believe this stuff. I've just consulted so many people. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Like people like him think that I don't talk to anyone. I just live in my own brain. I just sit in a room out. I've never consulted anybody on nothing because I push everybody away and I just hate the world. Like that's not who I am. You don't understand who I am because you're not trying to understand who I am. <sighs> he says there is no such thing as a smooth relationship. I never said that there was. I just said what it meant to say someone has a rocky relationship. Like now you're taking a stream. People don't say someone had a rocky relationship to describe all relationships. The fact that you're saying there, there is no such thing as a smooth relationship is taking the phrase rocky relationship out of context. You use the, the phrase, the term rocky relationship when you're talking about a relationship that's worse than most relationships. That is the point of that term. So yes, it's true that there is no such thing as a smooth relationship, but that doesn't change the fact that when people use the term rocky relationship, they do mean that it's worse than most relationships or it's really bad. It's a nice way of saying that. And you are just, again, taken out of context. So then he says, there's no such thing as a smooth relationship. Look, I'm not an angry fan of game theory. No, you're an angry fan of Markiplier. That's exactly what you are. You are a Markiplier stan and you're fucking toxic. I'm an angry fan of human decency. No, you're a fan of fucking Markiplier. And human decency, like decency is getting us killed. Read this, okay? So this says, theweek.com. What does the word decorum mean to you? Today, it's likely to summon up the smothering niceties of a Victorian era etiquette manual. Or maybe it speaks of a kind of inauthenticity. So it says, the idea of presenting a different self to the world at different times. Worse still, decorum can be suggestive of manipulative hypocrisy. It says, recall Wilfred Owen's first world war poem. Dolce et decorum est. And I might be saying that wrong. The sonorous Latin line about patriotic sacrifice sounding against the cries of teenage soldiers choking to death on mustard gas decorum can be the velvet glove around the iron fist a regressive bar to social change so when this guy says verbatim when this guy says i'm not an angry fan of game theory i'm an angry fan of human decency that means that he gets angry over people not being decent decorum which is suggestive of manipulation because people use decorum again it reg it's regressive it stops us from growing it halts growth because in order for you to i just did a video on optimism versus pessimism pessimism versus realism. Really recommend that you go and watch it where I basically explain how looking at negativity produces a net positive and looking at positivity produces a net negative. And if you want to know how, then go watch the video because I'm not going to explain it here. So then he says, 
you're a terrible person, at least in your videos. See, he's walking back from it immediately because he doesn't want to be tied down to anything. But no, you're saying I'm a terrible person. He says, if you can't see that, then you can't change. Again, you're a terrible person, at least in your comment. And you're the one who can't change. It's projection. And based on your videos on about Markiplier bringing him up again, I love how he said, I'm not an angry fan of uh, game theory. You're an angry fan of Mark. That's why you didn't say shit about not being one. It's clear that you're jealous of people more successful than you. Are you jealous of me? Like, because I'm not jealous of Markiplier. So again, I think this is projection. Are you mad that people are paying attention to what I have to say? And then nobody gives a fuck about your psych bullshit. And they probably think you're pretentious as fuck in real life. He says, by the way, whether they're good people or not, <laughs> he's just going to disregard whether they're good or not. The million Millions of dollars they've donated to charities have changed literally millions of lives, which is more than you can say. But charity is actually hurting us because it's being used as a replacement for taking action and fixing things. Charity just puts a bandage over surface level issues. It does not fix the root cause of it. So when you're saying that charity has changed millions of lives, it's changed them, but it hasn't fixed them. That's the problem. It has not fixed the lives. And as long as you only donate to charity and you don't take it any further with your fucking voice as someone with privilege, then yes. We're never going to make it. We're never, we're never going to make it to a life where people are actually living in peace and prosperity because they have it all. So when he says that, when he says that he's promoting this idea that charity is going to solve the world's issues. And if that's all that you do, which is mostly what these rich people do, th they're the ones who have the power to fix what we're going through. They're the ones with the privilege. They're the ones with the access. They're the ones with the funds. They're the ones with the connections and they're keeping it all for themselves, except for a slither of the funds, everything else they're keeping to themselves. They have more access to information. You know, just as I just said, imagine that you give a little bit of money away to people, but you're the one with all the access to the information. You're the one with all the networking capability. You're the one who's iconic. So you're able to impede knowledge on people and get them to actually listen and do what you want. You're the one with power. You're the one with privilege. You know, when celebrities go to jail, they're not dealing with the same thing that regular people are doing when they, when they go to prison. You know, if they get arrested, they'll be fine. If other people get arrested, they get put into the system. So there's so many benefits that you have for being powerful and they use none of it. They sit on their fucking ass playing video games and donate some fucking money. So yes, I have a problem with it. By the way, whether they're good people or not, millions of dollars they've donated to charities, changed millions of lives, which is more than you can say. No, I just said a lot more. So fucking try me. It says, and if you actually want to learn something about brain anatomy and psychology, you're not a neuroscientist. You are a psych major. You are not a neurologist. So stop. Brain anatomy and psychology. I recommend the game theorist to you. You already did that. So now you're walking in circles, stupid. Even though you already were before. But you already know everything, don't you, Mr. Sherlock? See, now he just revealed what he really thought, that I know everything. I don't think I know everything. And the reason why you're calling me Mr. Sherlock is because you think that I know everything and you can't fucking stand it. That's what you believe, not me. When people are comparing you to something that's very intelligent or very, you know, well-liked and stuff, it's because that's how they see you. That's not on my mind, it's on yours. He said, and heck, I'm spell checking this, so sorry for grammar mistakes and such. If you're spell checking it, then why the fuck do you have the grammar issue that you had? But who gives a fuck about grammar? Like, I suck at spelling. I spell checked it, then there shouldn't be anything wrong if you're gonna brag about it. Like, fuck. So then he says, oh, so that was it. And then you can see that there's 11 likes and some comment or whatever the fuck. And that's what he said. So this video is forever long, but I'm making the point that this is the type of shit that people talk about. And what I concluded at the end of this, like when I had skimmed through originally, I was just like, he's saying the same shit everyone says, but in a more, sadly, this is a detailed version to him. It's still not nuanced, but it's just more wordy. He's still saying, you don't know anything. No one wants to hear what you have to say. You don't know anything about psychology. You're toxic, you know, you're a bully you're a narcissist you just want to be rich and famous he's saying all the same shit it's just wrapped up and packaged differently and so I am sick of addressing these people and when this series is over I'm going to be done with it but that's just I wanted to show you that example so that you could see the best example okay the best example for these kind of people and so I don't know how long this video is going to be but yeah so the point is I'm just I'm going to be over this when the series is over and I'm just going to move on to what I wanted to talk about which was something that was very serious to to me personally like something that happened to me personally and yeah so that's all I have to say I'm just I'm tired of you know the bullshit and these people are honestly desperate for subs and views these people are crazy they're just crazy and they're all upset so anyway I do appreciate the support that I do get from people who actually take time to understand what kind of person I am it'd be different if I was that kind of person you know then I'd understand if people were mad but I'm clearly not so anyway thanks for watching and I'll see y'all next time